Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and one of the problems that we come across doing these type of projects regarding alternative energy is hooking up a power source like this uh, weed whacker engine that we've converted into an air engine, which that video is, you can find that on our channel, to this is a treadmill motor. Now this motor is basically comes from, most treadmills have these, They're, this one's actually 95 volt DC motor. They produce 1.5 horsepower and they can actually be used to um, generate electricity. I actually hooked this one up to a uh, pulley system. It's actually in this video right here using that uh, vintage air compressor. It's later on in the video, it's about 9 minutes and 50 seconds in. A lot of people have overlooked that, but it actually worked really well. The reason that I'm bringing this up is a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just hook it up to a generator? They assume that that's a pretty easy process. In reality, what happens is uh, most of the stuff that we use had a different purpose. So this, again, was used for a treadmill, and it has very specific threads for what it was being used for. These are not universal to anything. You take this uh, weed whacker engine, it also has its own customized threads because these were made by two completely different companies. So to simply hook these together is nothing that you're you're not going to be able to go to Lowe's and buy a thread that fits that and that. If you even attempt to, the guy who helps you there will think you're crazy. They just don't exist. So I've come up with a solution for testing. This isn't going to work for your project for a long-term process. By the way, one option is to take both of these to a machine shop and say, hey, I need these custom machine together, and it'll probably cost you a couple hundred bucks. You test your project, find out it doesn't work, you got to cut it in half. That's not the way to go with this. So that the way that you want to do it is find something, quick universal slip mounts that work for this. And one thing that I found is there's two different types of PVC pipe. There's CPVC, listed as a half inch CPVC, is actually smaller than regular PVC. They have a smaller diameter. And CPVC can actually fit tightly inside of regular PVC, so much so that you can actually just add a little glue and use it for an air, con uh, uh, an air or water connection. You don't even need the connectors for it. It works perfect. But for this video, what I'm going to be doing is just showing you real quickly how you can use just regular PVC pipe and a little bit of Teflon tape. This is the stuff that you use for plumbing. This stuff's about 20, 30 cents a roll, depending on where you get it, and also standard electric tape. So you're going to notice that this particular piece of PVC actually fits on here kind of good. It actually works. So this could be one part of the shaft. Now if you want to make sure that it's 100% tight, you basically take your Teflon tape. And one thing with this stuff, this stuff will slide down. So you want to make sure that it covers the input part of the shaft, like the part that slides so it has something to grab to. And now that's a more stable fit. Now this will spin out when you put a load on this, like a heavy load, so this isn't the perfect way to do it. There's other ways of doing that, but for just testing, just to see, so what we're going to do is cut this, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to put these together and see if we can get something that works. Okay, so we have our piece of PVC here, and uh, you're going to notice that I actually cut that with a chop saw. If you use a really sharp blade and go nice and slow, PVC cuts perfect. You just want to make sure you wear proper eye protection, that you don't put your hands anywhere near it, and you just got to be careful because occasionally a piece will grab and fly. Um, I've cut a lot of PVC this way. Actually, my brother-in-law showed me how to do it. I, I didn't think that it was possible, and I used to cut everything with just regular PVC cutters. Those work too, by the way, but if you know what you're doing... It's a lot faster. So we're going to put this on there and I'm going to go ahead and you're going to notice that this tape has a habit of smudging and smashing into itself. So what we want to do is get a nice grab with it. And we also want to be able to take it off when we're done. You're going to be really careful that you don't push the tape up deep into the bearing in there because if you do, you won't be able to really get it out. So what we're going to do is push it right about there and that's got a pretty good grab to it there's a so we have one half of the shaft done this is half inch regular pvc pipe this is half inch cpvc pipe and what i was trying to tell you was that these actually fit inside of each other not perfect the three quarter inch fits inside of uh i'm not sure what it is but the three quarter inch actually fits a little bit better to each other these have kind of a loose fit to them 
But what that does is it closes your gap significantly. So instead of me wrapping gobs of tape around this to fit this loose uh, fitting and then try to get this to go to that, I can take this one, put a little bit of tape, make this tight, and then this one will fit in there. So we're closer to center. We're not going to be absolutely perfect, um, but it's just worth noting about that. Now, another thing to, to notice with this is that this actually fits snugly around the shaft there. It actually fits nice and tight and threads nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ditch this larger piece for right now. I just wanted to show you this as an option and we're just going to go with this to this to get these hooked together. And again, if you have a machine shop and you're probably saying, wow, that's not how I would do it. I understand that this isn't the perfect way to do it. But for guys who don't have the tools like you do, this is the way of getting things just for testing. You don't want to run these at extremely high RPMs. You don't want to install this in your house because they're not going to hold up for a long period of time. Again, this is just to see if your idea works without spending a lot of money. You spend 20 minutes putting this together versus blowing two days trying to have something professionally done. When you work with electrical tape, uh, it's a good idea to get a nice stretch to it to where it, you'll see the electrical tape t change colors. It'll actually turn like a white, a lighter color, and that's the proper way to stretch stuff with it. So we're going to put this around there. It's got a nice tight fit. You can see we have the two of these joined. So we're going to uh, just going to put something under here to temporarily support this. And we're going to see how these, uh, just going to see how this runs. I'm going to hook just a little bit of power up to this, to this over here. Let's see if the 9 volt battery will cut it. So that's just with a simple 9 volt battery. And I'm putting a little compression compression on the engine. So you can see that the battery is not strong enough to run this particular engine, but it's the shaft isn't slipping. All right, so what we're going to be doing now is just testing to see if this holds up um, to generate some electricity. We've got the air hookups here. Now, one thing you want to be sure of, whenever you mess with this type of motor, you never ever ever want to put your fingers anywhere near that because it'll take off with your finger in that little groove there and you'll be in a lot of lot of hurt so we're going to see what happens so here we go All right, this is what we've been looking for right here you can see the reed switch in there i'm going to zoom in see the reed switch is doing its job 